Welcome to the R1200GS wethead bodywork and tank removal and installation video. In this video we're going to cover the bodywork and tank removal and installation process for the R1200GS wethead. Take a moment to gather a piece of styrofoam to arrange your screws in the pattern that you take them out. It makes it a lot easier. Push the clip and pop out the seat adjuster. Cover. All screws are T25 Torx except where noted. The two outer are T25 Torx, the middle one is a T30 Torx. If you're on the center stand, you can just turn the handlebars and use a, a regular screwdriver with a T25 torque in it. Once you've loosened the T30, just leave it in there. It'll come out when you pull the center panel off. Lift from the back and then pry up. It'll suddenly pop out as you can see here. Next, let's remove the wings. First we got the two screws on the inside. Again, if you're on the center stand, you can turn the handlebars and you can get in there with a regular screwdriver with the T25 Torx. Remember to organize your screws in that styrofoam. It'll make it a lot easier to get them back in since the shank on each screw is a different length. A pin that you knock out and then the clip will actually pop right out. You may have to work this a little bit to make it pop loose from the little clips that are in there. Now for the lower side panels. You take out these two screws and then you'll slide it backwards towards the back of the bike to get it off. Like I said, once the screws are out, you just kind of slide it backwards, it pops right off. Now for the upper side panels. I'm going to only show you one, but you're going to do both sides the exact same way. Once you get all the screws off, the side panel literally just lifts right off. Or front fender removal. Say remove the screws from both sides. Now it's as simple as just pulling straight forward and working around the turn signals. Time for the tank removal process. Typically you only need to do this if you're going to put some wiring underneath it. Now we're going to take off the rear clamp.
As you lift off this bracket, the little tubes will come out first. You need to pull those out first. That helps to unalign it. Unlike me, what you should do is clip the zip tie and unplug the fuse block before you take this off. Now it's time to remove the tank fence. If you have keyless, you'll also need to unplug it up on the front of the beak. Either or both sides may take a little bit of extra working. If you wiggle it back and forth, you can usually get it loose. Now we need to pull the tank back to expose the wiring and fuel line connections. One fuel line, two wires. One of them is for the tank sender unit, the other one is for the pump. For the fuel line, there's a little button that you're going to have to push to release it. You can feel it pop loose once you push it. Using an angled pick, you lift the locking flap on the plug, and then you can pull it loose. Angled or a straight pick for the other one. Works the same way. Now you're free to lift the tank off and set it aside. Now we examine the reassembly process. It's essentially the reverse of taking it apart. First, let's install the tank again. Basically, you just slide it up into position and then reassemble it. It's slightly awkward, but you plug in the electrical plugs first and then you plug in the fuel line. Make sure you push in the release as you push in the, before you push in the fuel line. Once all the connections are made, line up the tank and slide it into position. You can see the little hooks right there on the front lower will slide in. Then you put in the vent lines and you're ready to put on the clip at the back. If you have keyless, you're going to need to plug it in too up near the beak. To get the tank lined up, it's time to put the retainer in place. Put it down, and then you use the two spacers to hold it in place. Push in the sleeves to line it up with the tank, and then make sure you push the tank into place so you can get the bolts in. Now it's time to reinstall the fuse holder in the clip and then put a new zip tie on it. Now it's time to install the bodywork. We'll start with the beak. When pushing on the beak, you'll need to align the two inserts on the beak with these two pins. And you might have to work it around the turn signals and the light bar if you have one. Don't forget to work it around the intakes as well. You'll need to line those up with the beak and the nut plates.
Now for the tank side panels. Don't forget you gotta do both sides. Don't forget the lower two bolts on the side tank panels. The lower side panel slides into the two notches and then screws down in the back. Now you need to line up the clips for the lower front side panel. Be careful with these, they'll pop in. Make sure this rubber insert's on the bike and not on the panel. Also, you're going to want to put a little bit of oil on it to make it slippery and easy to put on. Also, before you put the oil on it, it's probably not a bad idea to put a little bit of super glue on the rubber to keep it in place. Now to put in the screws for the radiator guard to the shark fin. Now to reinstall the push pin. You're going to push the center in just a little bit, slide it into place, and then tap it in. You can push it in with pretty much anything, even the back of a screwdriver. Top panel basically just pops into place and then you install the screws. Good smart wax, but not too hard. Remember, all T25 torques are torqued down to 8 newton meters. Remember to check your shank size. This is why you want to use the foam that I was talking about to keep track of where your bolts go.
and that's it. I hope you learned something. I hope that was helpful. Uh, if you have any suggestions, please contact me at jimbombodden at msn.com.